Hello, this is Miss Elizabeth, and today I'm reading you a story from my childhood called Save Our Snowman. One winter Sunday, my best friend Colleen and I built the greatest snowman ever. A heavy snowstorm had just ended, so the white stuff rolled beautifully into a bottom torso and head. For personality, we gave him a traditional carrot nose, a jaunty hat, cozy scarf, and some too scratchy for us to wear mittens on the end of his stick arms. He was a magnificent masterpiece. The next morning, looking outside, we smiled adoringly at him over our cornflakes. We even high-fived him as we passed on our way to school. A lot of kids went past our house, so he was the hot topic in the halls of Lewisburg Elementary School that morning. As we removed our boots, we generously shared our professional snowman building tips and techniques. The dra day dragged on until finally we could struggle into our winter wear and head home. But as our yard came into sight, we saw that something wasn't right. A lot of uh, the, the snowman was gone. Carnage was strewn across the yard, a broken stick here, a wadded mitten there, telltale chunks of snow everywhere. Worst of all, his once proud carrot nose lay limp and half eaten. What had happened? We knew one thing. Our snowman would rise again, and so we rebuilt him. The next day, we came home to find another demise and more debris on the front lawn. For the rest of the week, the destruction was repeated daily. Each afternoon, we'd return to find him crushed, and then we would build him up again. By Saturday morning, we had formulated a plan. Mom supplied a really big zinc bucket, no questions asked. We filled it with water and left it outside. The next morning, it was frozen solid. We packed snow all around the ice block for the base. Then we rolled and stacked the torso, and rolled and stacked the head before adding the snowman's accessories. The trap was set. Friends and snowman celebrated with another round of mittened high fives. Monday morning, we dawdled over breakfast, savoring our cereal. Peeking out the window, our faces hidden, we soon saw what we were waiting for. A trio of sixth grade bullies sauntered up to our snowman and sneered. Taking their places on either side, they pulled back their legs to deliver mighty kicks. But when their feet connected with the immovable ice block, sneers turned to surprise and then pain and then tears. We came close to feeling sorry for them, but they were too comical as they hopped away holding their damaged feet. We started laughing and couldn't stop. Could it be that the snowman who had sent them packing was laughing too? I don't know, but I do know that was the end of our problem with snow bullies.